In 2018, we embarked on the journey of a lifetime, living and traveling full-time in our self-converted van. We're gonna go for it. Join us as we continue to explore the beauty around us, one adventure at a time. Today we are in Pennsylvania, about 30 miles north of Bloomberg and Interstate 80. And this is Ricketts Glen State Park Campground. And there's a couple of very unique things about this campground that we'll just talk about more at the end of the video when we do what you need to know. You might be surprised, you might not be. But first, we had a comment maybe a week or two ago that really hit hard that we have thought a lot about. So we wanted to sit down and just have a conversation about that. I think it hit hard because some of that we feel like it's true, but we wanted to share with you and have a little bit of a conversation about it. But we did, we got a comment that said, basically said that we've lost our spark and our some of our content has gotten boring. Yep. And the person was very nice about it, very respectful, and I appreciate the comment. So no hard feelings to the person who left this comment. It just got us to think a little bit about what our experience has been the last couple of months. Yeah, and we try really hard to find the best boondocking locations that we can share with you. Spots that we want you guys to come to and enjoy. And we put a lot of time and effort into that. I'm going to say coming from the West Coast, that's easy. Yeah. To give you a little bit of a perspective, we are currently in Pennsylvania. The top third of California, if you were to break it into three parts, the top third of Northern California has over 5 million acres of national forest. Pennsylvania has 500 acres of national forest. I think it's 500,000. 500,000, yeah. yeah, you're right. So out here, it's much, much harder to find boondocking. Yeah. And I think we're tired. <laughs> we're tired, yeah. So we have been doing so much research, hours and hours and hours of research, especially here in Pennsylvania. And what we're looking at is we're checking out all these free camping places and we're, we think we're finding them. So we, we, we're using our apps, our free roam, iOverlander, Camppendium, Google. Google Maps, and we're thinking we're finding these locations. But then when we start digging a little deeper, they start either, they come up as permits. So we call about getting a permit and find out, oh no, they're not doing permits anymore, that now it's all pay. And it's a little bit depressing because just last year you know these were all free camping and now they're all paid camping and that covers all the state forest in pennsylvania yeah so okay so we're not we're not talking bad about pennsylvania because we found one of the best boondocking probably one of our favorite boondocking locations in pennsylvania that's on the east coast yeah but Pennsylvania has been the example for us is we've we've done probably between Dave and I at least at least five hours of research. Oh yeah, I think it's probably more than that. And and not to mention phone calls. It's okay that they're permitted. We're fine. We're happy to jump through the hoops and get the permits. We did that in Florida. It was awesome. Yep. But when we started calling on the permits it's, oh no, they're not free anymore. As of November of 2022, now they're all pay. Okay, so let's see how much they are. So then you have to go to Reserve America to even reserve these dispersed campsites that are basically a pull-off on the side of the road. Yeah, so yeah, it's just primitive camping. Some of them aren't very remote or... Uh, and then they charge you to make the reservation on top of it that they don't refund. And then it's not like they're just charging a couple of dollars for these sites that used to be free. They're charging like, what, 10 or 15? Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're starting to see. We're starting to see 
some of these permitted spots, they, they start off free and then they go to the permit system and then they move on to the pay system and they, they jump right up on in the pay. They don't waste any time. So for, for me, I find it a little bit depressing. Discouraging. Yeah. Discouraging. Yeah. And, and not only, we're not even going to go into why they've gone to the pay system, but let's just say now that they're pay, in order to reserve these sites, you have to go online and reserve them. And they have not made the process easy. No. Um, you get the reservation fee, and if you need, for whatever reason, to change your reservation, that's a fee. Um, some states, like New York, they want you to reserve two weeks in advance. And some states, like Massachusetts, I'm sorry to say, uh, it's $15 a night for residents and $54 a night for out-of-state. Yeah. Which pretty much says... They don't want you to count. <laughs> You're not welcome here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have been working really, really hard. And I think we have just put too much pressure on ourselves yeah. to bring you these awesome boondocking locations. And we've gotten away from... Just filming what we're doing. Filming what we're doing and enjoying where we are and being yeah. in the moment. I think that's what it boils down to. Yeah. I agree. So, you know, some of the content that we're going to have is not always going to be, um, you know, the best camping spots. We're always going to try hard to find really cool spots because it makes us happy to share with you. But we're just going to have to show whatever we get and make the best out of it. Yeah. And, and some states are much harder than other states. And so we're just going to put all of that discouraging vibes behind us. Throw it out the window. <laughs> Um, and just, just go with the flow. I don't know what else to say. Yep. So, you know, not every video is going to be the best video, but we're going to show you what we're doing. Um, one of like some of the stuff that you're not seeing that we're doing is we're spending quite a few nights at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> We've gotten very acquainted with Cracker Barrel. And we like Cracker Barrel because it's a, it's a great place to stay, but it's not a great place to do a video. And it all hasn't been bad. I mean, we, that... Like we said, the Allegheny National Forest that we stayed at in Pennsylvania is one of our favorite places now. So we really appreciate um, the advice that we got to stay there from Larry and Mike. Thank you guys, because that really made it for us. Mm -hmm. Without that location, it would have been even harder. Yeah. And van life isn't always easy. It isn't always glamorous. It isn't always the best boondocking spot. So I guess... Maybe we need to show more of that. Yeah, we can show, you know, just whatever we're doing. And hopefully you guys will find it entertaining and useful. And stick around. And stick around. <laughs> and then sometimes we'll have, you know, just amazing places like what I'm... Newfoundland? Like what I'm expecting in Newfoundland. If it's if there's not two or three feet of snow on the ground, that should be challenging. But um, sometimes it might just be a video of us on the road and staying on a pull-off on the side, you know. It might not be a spot that we can really share because... It's not like a destination location, but mm -hmm. at least we can share the experience and what we're doing. We had to drive to our parking location to hike one of these trails because all the trails from our camp spot are closed unless you're an experienced ice climber with the proper gear. Which we don't have. Which we don't have, which is kind of sad because there's a loop that you can do. It's only a little over three miles and you can see 23 different waterfalls. But we're just gonna go see what we can find. We know there's at least a couple of waterfalls up this route and check them out. This is a really pretty trail. Yeah.
I really didn't want to get out this morning and go hiking because I was lazy bum. But now that I'm on the trail. It feels good, huh? It feels good. I know. Same here. It's beautiful. It's cold, but not too cold. No, it's a great day. We noticed a whole bunch of pretty large sawdust all over the ground. Or at first we thought, well, maybe they're doing some trail maintenance. But if you look up this dead tree right here, well, you can see the mushrooms on it. But there has been a really busy woodpecker up there just carving out giant holes. There must be some good bugs or insects in there. That guy's been busy. All right, we're at a crossroads here. This is where we're at. So we can go right up the river on the difficult trail or go up the hill and then take the moderate route to the first waterfall. They both meet there. Let's see which way Carrie wants to go. Moderate or difficult? I wanna go moderate. I don't wanna do difficult, but I wanna follow the stream. So we're doing difficult. I like the wrong choice, but we're nah. gonna do the difficult. Yeah, I think that's the right choice. <laughs> Come on, Rudolph. Oh. That's pretty. Yeah, I like that. Water's coming right out of the moss. The trail really doesn't seem that difficult. It's just that it goes up really high away from the water and then down all the way to the shoreline again, over and over again, like a roller coaster. Of course, it's steeper than it looks. I'm watching my step real carefully. This is how we know when Rudel's really happy. He starts grabbing sticks and taking them along with him. He's having a really good day. This is, I think this might be as good as playing ball for Rudel. All right, Rudel. Good boy. Good boy, can I see it? No, it's your stick, huh? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yep. And a rootle doodle. We are coming up on our very first waterfall. Oh, this is cool.
I'm pretty sore, but I want to just go around one more corner. Okay. And then if we don't see nothing, we'll just turn back. Okay. Well, that didn't take long. Oh, wow. That was worth pushing ahead. Only a few more feet. Oh, it's a good one. That really wasn't staged. We really just said that and walked around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. <laughs> I, you know, I thought maybe half a mile or so, but not a hundred feet. Dave is going to go back and I'm going to trudge on, which is usually not how it happens. But the reason he's going back is because of what I'm about to go up. He can go up okay, but coming down hurts his back. So let me show you what I'm about to go up. sad too because right at the top of this falls this falls number three right there Absolutely stunning. It's been raining, so there's a good amount of water. As I said earlier, I did not want to get out today. It's being lazy. I sure am glad I did. This is the swimming beach. It's about 600 feet long. It's the only area at the lake where you are allowed to swim. I could imagine in the summertime when it's warm outside how popular this would be. There is also a boat ramp, boat rentals, picnic tables spread out all over the place. A great place to come and have a picnic or get ready to take your hike on the falls hike because the trail, one of the trailheads is right behind here. That building right there is a concession stand and I'm betting they have ice cream. Just not right now. I would imagine in the fall, this would be the place to be with these trees all turning bright colors and you get a great view of the lake. At least three of these cottages are, you can have pets in them, but they're only open in the summertime where the cabins, a few of those are open all year round. But this is your front view right at the lake. 
My favorite thing about this state park campground are the waterfalls and the trail. Absolutely, you know we love waterfalls. We are a little bummed that we only got to see a portion of them because there were something like 22, 24 waterfalls yeah. cool. in this loop. So this is late March and most of the trail is still iced over. So in order to access all of those waterfalls, you need um, ice gear, which we didn't have. Yeah, and experience and a check-in. So this could be a real experience just for that alone. Yeah. All right, what you need to know. We're gonna start off with rig size. Any size rig can get here and camp. I did notice that there is a limited amount of pull-through spots. So if you need one of those, make sure you reserve early. And speaking of rig size, the hill here, this is at the top of a mountain, 2,500 feet, and it's an 18% grade coming in from the south, the Bloomberg side. Yeah, two miles of 18%. Yeah, so if you have a heavy <laughs> rig or you don't have a lot of horsepower, you may consider coming in from the north. Yes, or if you don't have a lot of brake power, don't go down the mm -hmm. south side. <laughs> All right, amenities. I'm gonna start off by saying hot showers, and that's year-round hot showers, which yes. I think is one of the real unique things about this campground. Most campgrounds in the north, if they're even open, they don't have hot showers available. Yeah, so they keep a, a loop open all year, weather permitting if you can get in, and it has heated bathroom with hot showers, and it was awesome. It was amazing. <laughs> so other amenities, I mean, this is like a full service campground, so you have multiple dump stations and water. There are some sites that have it all. They have electricity, water, dump. Sewer. And sewer, so um, that's pretty cool. Trash cans, everything you can need is yep. here. Yep. So let's talk about the camping that's here. There's anything from tent camping to pull through trailers to the cottages to the cabins. Anything for everybody. The cabins, I believe, are open all winter. Yeah, and the cottages, the small cottages that are right on the lake, they're only open in the summer. Yeah. So, I mean, you can come any time of year and have a great time here. Okay, we should tell you about all the things there are to do because there is all kinds of stuff going on. There is so much to talk about. Uh, there's, well, let's start with winter. Okay, in the winter, there's ice fishing. Snowmobiling, ice, yeah. snowshoeing. What else is a snowball fight? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty cool to have winter activities. Oh, ice here. climbing! If you have yep. if you have ice gear, you can ice climb the waterfalls. In the summertime, you have fishing and kayaking and canoeing and boat rentals and horseback riding. And concession stands and swimming on the beach. Yep. There's a ton of trails to walk here, and of course, in the summertime, you can do that full loop where you can get all 22-ish waterfalls yeah and it's in a short distance too mm -hmm. so i mean you can catch them all oh, yeah. oh i did want to say if you do bring your own boat here it's motorboat only so uh of course you electric can bring motors elect only? yeah electric yeah <laughs> <laughs> electric <laughs> motors only yeah. so that means the lake will be nice and quiet yeah. so if you come here and you don't have a good time it's your own fault <laughs> <laughs> there is so much to do there is so much to do I did want to say that if you come here um, closer to the peak season and you want to do the waterfall hike, you'll want to plan it early because this state park is so popular and the waterfall hike, you will be hiking with hundreds of people. Yeah. So it, it's worth it though. It's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth it. I also wanted to mention that when you book your reservations, uh, I will try to find some prices for you if I can, but pay attention to which loop you are reserving. One loop allows pets, one loop does not allow pets. Yep. So you wanna make sure you're on the right side. Only a few of the cottages allow pets, the other ones do not. I'm assuming it's the same with the cabins. Yep. yep. Also, we did notice there are ticks out already. It's early in the season, so mm -hmm. be tick aware. There's also bears here, so you have to be smart and with your food. And be bear aware. And be bear aware. Yeah, we did hike with our bear spray. Yep. And we got lots of reasons to come back to this one, especially the waterfalls. Yeah, we're a little bummed we missed the big grand circle of waterfalls. Yep. One of the waterfalls is 94 feet yeah, that we missed. I saw that one. <laughs> so definitely, definitely, if you're in the area, we think this is a place to stop. You know, we are not big on campground camping but I think this is one of those campgrounds we would definitely stop yeah. at. It's unique for yeah. sure. Or anybody, it's amazing. anybody that has a family and wants to, a lot of activities to do, this is the place to come. Yeah, because there's a lot to do for everybody. Yep. So 
I think right. we got it. I think we covered it. So <laughs> we appreciate you watching our video. Uh, we hope you get a chance to stop by here and check it out for yourselves. And we hope you'll follow us on our journey north to Newfoundland. And we will see you next video. See you next video. If you would like to support our channel, please consider becoming a patron. Or check out our new merchandise at oneadventureatatime.com.